good evening all welcome to the new session companion cases spotter set 2 uh, thanks for uh, all the subscribers who have supported my channel and our channel has been nominated uh, and been awarded as global education services as highly commended uh, group by the jca seminars private limited uk recently uh, next case, so we're coming to the first case where you can see this is the anterior superior iliac spine evolution and in the second set you can see this is the anterior inferior iliac spine evolution so we'll try to see uh, anterior superior iliac spine evolution due to sudden and forceful contraction of the sartorius and tensor fascia lata muscles seen in, commonly seen in young athletes whereas anterior inferior iliac spine evolution is nothing but due to injury and eccentric contraction of the rectus femoris muscles so this is the anterior superior iliac spine evolution due to contraction of the sartorius and tensor fascia lata and this is the anterior inferior iliac spine evolution due to uh, ex contraction of the rectus femoris muscles so here this is the image where you can see Class, uh, where you can see uh, the iliac crest muscles nothing but abdominal muscles evolution will lead to evolution of the iliac crest sartorius and tensor fascia lata muscles evolution will lead to evolution of the anterior superior iliac spine rectus femoris will cause anterior inferior iliac spine, iliac spine evolution uh, hip rotators will cause greater trochanter evolution iliosaurus tendon evolution will cause evolution of the lesser trochanter hamstrings will cause ischial tuberosity evolution and adductors and gracilis will cause body of pubis and inferior pubic ramus evolution next case here you can see uh, there is even uh, there is a dilata uh, there is dilatation of the jejunal and ilial loops there are nothing but uh, rounded uh, widely separated valve conventus in the jejunum there is dilution of the contrast and there is jejunation of the ilium so the jejunal ilial fold reversal pattern is seen which is classically seen in celiac disease whereas here you can see there are multiply multiple uh, dilated uh, even dilated bowel loops are seen and valve conventus are nothing but wide uh, narrowly placed sharply demarcated and smooth with smooth uh, margins typically remembering stack of coin appearance so here this is the case of first one case is nothing but dilatation of the jejunum ilium dilution of the contrast fragmentation and flocculation and jejunal ilial fold reversal pattern so here this is that reversal of the jejunal ilial pattern so here you can see there is jejunation of the ilium and there is dilution of the contrast so this is a case of celiac disease where this typically is nothing but these are nothing but multiple valve conventus which parallel folds making stack of coin appearance in scleroderma and also strictures intersusception and lymph nodes with cavitation and flat fluid levels are common in celiac disease rather than in scleroderma in this case you can see here you can see there is nothing but erlenmeyer flash deformity there are metaphyseal sclerotic bands there is typical mid diaphyseal sclerosis involving the tibia and even femur so all the long bones are showing mid diaphyseal sclerosis with erlenmeyer flash deformity this is a case of piles disease whereas in this is an adult where there is mid diaphyseal sclerosis and also which is hypointense on mri so this is a case of ribbing's disease so first case is a piles disease which is also called as metaphyseal dysplasia where there will be flaring of long ends of bones merlenmeyer flash deformity and typical mid diaphyseal sclerosis and uh, sometimes there will be cranial sclerosis and genu valgus deformity and uh, piles disease with cranial involvement is also called cranial metaphyseal dysplasia whereas ribbing disease is called hereditary multi multiple diaphyseal sclerosis in this case here you can see these are the multiple lymph nodes which are showing conglomerate lymph nodes which showing central fat density whereas here you can see there are these are the multiple lymph nodes which are showing cavitations with fat fluid levels so the first case is a whipple's disease and the second case is nothing but the cavitating lymph nodal syndrome so lymph nodes with central fat density is seen in whipple's disease whereas cavitating lymph node syndrome with fat fluid levels is seen in celiac disease and is the what is the classical triad you have to remember that is splenic atrophy lower tenacious lymphadenopathy containing fat fluid levels and villus atrophy next case here you can see uh, there is a central free air noted in the left lobe of the liver not reaching up to the periphery here you can see there is free air in both lobes of the liver but it's showing typical branching pattern and reaching up to the periphery of the liver so first case is pneumobilia second case is portal vein gas so <coughs> pneumobilia can be differentiated from portal vein gas but after giving iv contrast administration there will be no change in the gas position in case of pneumobilia but whereas the portal vein gas causes whereas portal vein gas will typically change the position after giving IV, IV contrast administration. So central free air, no branching pattern, not reaching up to the periphery. Typically in left lobe, remember pneumobilia, free air in both lobes of the liver, showing branching pattern, reaching up to the periphery and changes position after giving IV, IV contrast administration, remember portal vein free air. 
next case here you can see there is a well defined lobulated lesion central fiber hypo hypotense scar with radiating bands this is a case of fnh here you can see large lobulated lesion central scar which is showing calcifications so this is a case of fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma coming to fnh you can see this is a round lobulated which is smaller than flc it is mostly common in young middle age females central fibrous scar is hypotense and is hyperintense on titivated images delayed enhancement in the scar is common in fnh fnh is homogeneous with no calcifications and it will show increased activity on technician 99 and sulfur colloid scan whereas fibrolamellar carcinoma is larger than fnh usually seen in 20 to 40 years of age no general prediction central fibrous scar is hypotense on ct hypointense on all sequences delayed enhancement of central scar is not common in uh, fibrolamellar carcinoma it is heterogeneous with calcifications in the central scar decreased or no activity on technician 99 or sulfur colloid scans next case here you can see uh, there is a cystic lesion noted in the internal extramedullary location which is hyperintense on t2 hyperintense on t1 and completely suppressed on fat suppressed sequences and this is causing displacement of spinal cord to the left so this is a case of lipoma here you can see this is completely suppressed on fat suppressed sequences whereas this is the other case where cystic lesion is also seen in extradural location causing displacement of the spinal cord which is hyper intense on t2 this is a case of arachnoid cyst so the first case is a lipoma here you can see this completely suppressed on fat suppressed sequences but here this is hyper intense on t2 this is a case of arachnoid cyst next case you can see there is a multiple lobulated synovial thickening noted in involving adjacent to the ankle joint which is showing significant blooming on GRE whereas here you can see multiple uh, round to oval hypointense nodular lesions which are which will also show blooming on GRE noted adjacent to the knee joint so the first case is nothing but pigmented villa nodular synovitis second case is nothing but synovial osteochondromatosis so thanks to all my teachers subscribers please do support my channel and please do nominate for J nominate me for JCA radiology awards 2023 this is my channel page. These are all the links where you can follow me. Thank you all.